Hi, my fellow flights and friends. Welcome back in MSFS. Today we are going to take a look at the Cessna Citation Longitude, a very fine business jet that is coming with the premium deluxe version of MSFS. And it's a very well simulated uh, aircraft rendition right here in the sim. It has been enhanced via the aircraft and avionics update number one. And it features a very well simulated uh, G5000 avionics suite. And as you can see, we are flying November 802 Quebec Sierra today, which is part of the NetJets uh, fleet. So NetJets is a very large uh, business jet operator that has bases in the US, in Portugal and in China, I think. And today we are flying in the USA. So we are flying from Kilo Mike Foxtrot Romeo, which is, uh, let me check that. It is Rogue Valley International, Medford. And we are flying down to San Francisco which is Kilo Sierra Foxtrot Oscar. And I hope you will stick around for the flight and not only for three minutes of the video, that would be awesome. So let's hop into the cockpit and start with the tutorial. So here we are in the cockpit. As mentioned already, this aircraft features the G5000 suite by Garmin. It has uh, four of those tiny or little touchscreen controllers. We, we have two of them in the center and two at each side of the pilot and co-pilot and we have three of those large i think 14 inch displays all right the circuit breakers are not working in this aircraft model right here it's still pretty much a default aircraft by msfs but greatly enhanced by now down here we have the electrical panel and on the co-pilot side we mainly have the anti-icing systems We have a flaps lever, we have a parking brake lever, we have a speed brake in this aircraft too. And it even features an APU. So unlike many other business jets, this one has an APU, an auxiliary power unit. So let us begin with the initial startup. First the standby power switch goes to the test position for some seconds and then switching it on. And then the left and right main batteries. We will dial back the uh, integrated lighting a bit because it's way too bright right now. And we're going to arm the emergency exit lights. By the way, I did already load the aircraft in the menus of MSFS, but we will take a look at that a bit later again. Down here we have some map lights for the pilot and co-pilot, making it a bit brighter in that area as well. Down here we have a knob for the uh, brightness of the center display and the Garmin touchscreens. Right here we have the controls for the pilot side displays and here for the co-pilot side displays. So I think those are all the brightness controls. First of all we make sure that we are in the correct nav source mode, so in this case we are in FMS mode. And then we are going to have a look at the PFD settings, which is also quite important. Especially this is the place where you can select the barrel units. So we are making sure that we have uh, inches mercury selected for this flight. And of course you can also toggle to HPA for Europe flights and wherever. Alright, as you can see, the batteries are discharging, so we are going to connect the external power that we have available right here. If you don't have external power available, then you need to start the APU at some point. That's what we are going to cover a bit later here. All right, on the MFD we can see our ICAS information, so the uh, engine parameters, we have our fuel, our trim settings, gear enunciations, the uh, pressurization system, the temperatures, the batteries and also the APU status. I selected the map display for the left side right here and on the right side you can select whatever you want, traffic display, weather display, charts, that is all working in this aircraft type. Very nice, the systems right here once again. You can even make the charts full screen. You can zoom in with this dial and also click it to have the touchpad and, uh, and scroll through the chart like this. And now we're making it uh, in half mode once again. So that's how these things are working here. Up here we have uh, only the light sections pretty much. So the landing lights, taxi, recognition lights and the wing lights and also the beacon and the passenger signs. And as soon as you turn on the battery also the nav lights will automatically turn on. 
There's no separate switch for those. Alright, next up let us switch the transponder to standby mode for now. So we don't squawk VFR all the time. Because we fly IFR today and we'll get our squawk later by ATC. Further, there are some settings that you can set up for the aircraft. So right here you have the Navigraph setup where you can connect your Navigraph account. Also here are the uh, avionics settings. Plenty of stuff that you can set up right here, but mostly the uh, default values are fine. Down here we are going to change the uh, weight units to pounds for this flight. Because we're in the USA. Here you even have the uh, altitude callouts when approaching the runway and all that stuff. Now let's go to the SimBrief section and we are going to download and request our latest SimBrief flight plan which will be the NetJets flight 325. And it's already imported. It also imports the, uh, the SID, so the departure and the star as well. You can show the complete flight plan on the map. So we are going to fly from up there, from Medford, southern direction to San Francisco. Our planned uh, cruise flight level will be 410. And this will be also quite some interesting departure out of here, I'm sure. Looking forward to that. Here you can see the procedures, the departure is in, the arrival is in, but the approach hasn't been loaded yet. We are going to do that later during the flight. Maybe also the winds will change or anything. Also here you have to check the VNAV for the flight. So as you can see VNAV is enabled. In the climb section you can check your climb schedule. You also have the 250 knot restriction below 10,000 feet and the terminal area speed limit. That works quite well in general. Cruise will be 320 knots or Mach 0.83 and here we also have our de uh, descent schedule. I think I didn't change anything there. That should be the default setup. Also, if you change anything, then it will uh, save and carry over to upcoming flights, as far as I know. Alright, further now let's listen to ATIS. It's 127.25, so we click our standby frequency, enter it and say transfer, and we are going to hear F as such ATIS. Rogue Valley Medford Addis, information X ray 1442, wind 026 degrees at 3 knots, visibility 10 statute miles, sky condition clear, temperature 6, dew point 3, altimeter 2 niner, niner niner, transition altitude 18000, transition level, flight level 190, landing runway 14, departure runway 14, advise you have information X ray. Okay, the altimeters are 29999 and we have to set those uh, independently for pilot and co-pilot and also the standby instrument. Now let's tune to ground, 121.8. Alright, so we are going to depart runway 14, that's also what's pre-planned uh, pre by SimBrief. Nothing to change right there. Now let's have a first look at the system pages. So we are going to uh, increase the temp a bit to 22 degrees for the flight. And here on the synoptics uh, section you can check all the systems that are in the aircraft. And I like uh, to set up the pre-flight page. That shows you all the automatic tests that are going to be performed. And the status of all the systems that have to be set up correctly before taking off. Now this is the weight setup that we have for the flight. As you can see we have 4200 pounds of fuel. And 1260 pounds of payload approximately. So we have pilot and co-pilot and five passengers on board and also a little bit of cargo. We need to remember that for our takeoff uh, calculations. So here we are at the weight and fuel section. And we have to enter the amount of passengers and also the uh, additional cargo. So our zero fuel weight is approximately 24.6. So I have to add a bit of more cargo right here. Right here we have to enter our fuel on board, so we are going to hit FOB sync, and that will take the uh, currently loaded fuel for the value. Alright, we still were a bit too light, so I did increase a bit uh, 
the passenger weights and cargo, so now we're at 28.8, 20, that comes close. And on the landing tab we also have to enter our reserves and an expected holding time. So let me also open up the SimBrief panel right now, so we have a little look at that. But here we have final reserves plus alternate is uh, 1.6 approximately. We can also enter the exact value and uh, we might have a little holding time of 10 minutes, so we plan for that as well. I'm sure not all the calculations for the fuel are 100% integrated right here in the sim, but still, whatever. Now let's go to the takeoff data calculator. Right here we have our departure airport and the runway. We have to import our metadata, so the surface is dry. We have to load the meta and use the uh, temperature sensor for the outside air temp. Runway is fine. And now to the takeoff config. We are going to leave all the default values. Flaps 1 for takeoff. And right here we can uh, accept the takeoff speeds that have been calculated for the weight, the runway length and everything. So we have V1 100 knots, V rotate 106, V2 is 123 and V FTO is 185. That's also our terminal area speed that will be set shortly after takeoff. So now it's a good time to request our flight clearance. Medford Ground, Exit Jet 325, Parking 26, Request Clearance to San Francisco with Information X-Ray. And also turn on the seatbelt signs. Exit Jet 325, cleared to San Francisco via Julian Kilo Sierra November 1, departure runway 14, initial climb flight level 190, then is filed, squawk 6552. So we dial in the altitude and by pushing the altitude button you go to fine mode and you can enter the 100s. We are going to enter the score code, enter and uh, altitude reporting. We are already on the ground frequency so we don't need to enter any new frequency right now. And we will start the APU. So first we flick on the switch to the on position and we are waiting for the APU status to come up. Right there it is. And now we can finally start it. Hold the switch for a second on the start. Detent and that will fire the APU up. There you can see the RPMs are rising. It fires up quite quickly. It's a very small APU in this aircraft of course. There on the electrical page we can see now that the APU gen came online. It's providing the power so we can disconnect the external power. Bus tie is now closed. So the electrical system is very well simulated in this aircraft. Now let's quickly go through the uh, cockpit inspection checklist. So the standby power is on, emergency lights aren't, landing gear is down. Batteries are on, external power source is now the APU. Lights are checked. And also the cockpit preparation can be performed right now. So the checklist, so inspection is completed, ice and case are checked, APU is running. That's all fine, Agents has been uh, listened to. So now we are going to set up the trims for takeoff. Right here we have the trim indicator. And in the aircraft checklist there's also a little uh, chart provided. So for our current center of gravity, which is approximately 26.5 I think it was, we need a trim setting of negative 5.5. Okay, we also have to make sure that our landing elevation is correctly set. Right here on the systems and cabin pressure page, you can verify it's automatically set at 12 feet. So further down the checklist, weight and fuel are set, takeoff data is uh, calculated, V-speeds are set now. Not yet visible on the PFD, but that will come a bit later. Fuel is checked and autopilot is also fine. Now we are going to hit the TOGA button at the uh, throttle handle right there. And that will engage the flight director in takeoff mode, also with the uh, flight director bars pointing at 10 degrees nose up. So now let us request a push and start. Medford Ground, exit jet 325, request push back and start up. Turning on the pack safety button and the anti-collision light. Exit jet 325, push back and start up approved. And because we are not using GSX with this business jet right here, we are going to let MSFS uh, perform the pushback by this 
well-known little pushback card right there. We're making sure that the throttles are idle. Once again, I'm also going to show you the checklist right quick. So now we are getting pushed back and we are going to disengage the parking brake. Now for engine start, we are going to hit for the right engine first. We are going to hit this uh, covered run button. So it has a guard over it that is barely visible. Then we are going to check the ICAS display that we have if sufficient bleed air for engine start. And we are going to hit this run button and now the uh, engine will fire up. We have the start indication and the ignition. And two is rising, oil pressure should be coming right now. And the right engine is starting. Also engine start is going quite quickly here. That will be sufficient for pushback, parking brake on. And the engine is running. So now we can do the same steps for the left engine. Open the guard, run and close the guard and push this uh, left engine start button and once again the engine is firing up. Also the sound pack by FTSIM Plus is quite good. Okay, electrical page, we can see both gens are online. Right here we have the gen switches, they are on, so in the, in the on position by default. APU gen off and APU off, flaps 1 for takeoff. We are going to toggle the speed brake once, so that is also then checked. Otherwise you will have caution for takeoff. Right here we have our auto tests that have all been performed by now and our items for the uh, takeoff. So the only item that is now still yellow is the parking brake and that will be no issue. Let's do a flight control check. So full left aileron and full right. Forward and aft and left and right rudder. And we can request our taxi. Exit jet three two five. Request taxi. Exit jet three two five. Taxi to holding point runway one four five. Bravo Charlie one Charlie Charlie two Alpha. Alpha. Exit right here we have the enter icing controls. So if you are in icing conditions, you would turn on the engine enter ice maybe now. But we don't need those. Taxi and record lights on. So the taxi and recognition lights. And we are good to go. We are clear left and right. And we are going to turn right now onto this taxiway. You don't arm any further autopilot modes now before takeoff. Because all the autopilot modes will be engaged after lift off. So also let's go through the before taxi checklist now quickly. Flight controls have been checked, speed brakes are retracted, flaps are set, flight instruments and everything is awesome. Altimeters are set and engine enter ice we don't need. And how awesome is this charts function right here, I love it. Zooming in a bit and so we can see our taxi route. Quite awesome my friends, now we are taxiing to the runway and I will see you when we arrive. Oh, by the way, down here you can see the ground speed. That might also be useful. Once again, not going over 20 knots on the ground. And here we are. We did arrive at runway 14. And now we are tuning into tower. And the TCAS or transponder mode to auto now. Let's take the traffic display for now for departure and uh, and we make sure that the APU is off, flips are set. We are going to push the auto throttle buttons. So you get the takeoff auto throttle uh, annunciation right there. So let's go through the before takeoff checklist. The flaps are set for takeoff, the trim is correctly set. Speed brakes are retracted. Ice protection is uh, set so far. 
we pretty much don't need it for the flight. We have our V speeds now showing on the PFD as well. We are in FMS speed mode and everything else is fine so far. So what we are going to do after liftoff, so we are going to pull back, then bring up the gear and at V2 plus 20 we are going to retract the flaps and then we are going to engage our autopilot modes. So we will take flight level change, VNAV and also NAV or yeah it's LNAV. So LNAV is called NAV right here and these will be the three modes that we have to push. Once again, like in other business jets as well, it will all go quite quickly because the aircraft is very light and super powerful. Also, let's choose the timer mode for the uh, pilot's uh, Garmin display right here. So this aircraft doesn't feature an automatic elapsed timer as far as I know. Exit jet 325, line up runway 14. Okay, we have been cleared for lining up on the runway. And I didn't set the uh, runway heading yet, so we're going to do that. Heading 143, and now let's move. No traffic in sight. Let's engage the landing lights now, taxi lights as well. Stay on. And the wing inspection lights. And even though we were just talking about it, I will forget to start the timers for the flight. But that's a minor thing, I like to forget that for some reason. <laughs> Alright, we are aligned on the runway. So the checklist uh, below the line, flight controls are free, ice protection is fine, I exterior lights are set now, ice and CAS are checked, so no further warning messages or anything. Also the transponder is in auto mode and all the throttle is armed, MCP is set so far. So let's go my friends. We're going to push the throttle all the way forward, because we have auto throttle in this aircraft this will give us takeoff thrust. And we get the green hold and AT annunciations now on the PFD. And there we have 106 knots, so we are going to pull back and lift off. Now tapping the brakes and gear up. And flaps up as well now. And now we're going to engage NAV, flight level change and VNAV. So according to the chart we can start our right turn above uh, 1800 feet. So we will do that right now. Also, I'm going to turn off the taxi and wing lights. Cascade departure, exit jet 325, Juliet Kilo Sierra November 1, departure at 3600, climbing flight level 190. And this departure will be one giant right turn, I can already tell you that. Continue climb flight level 190. Now we are already at 250 knots and the aircraft climbs with over 7000 feet per minute. I don't really like that. I'm no big fan of business jets, I must say. They are way too powerful for initial climb. That must be quite uncomfortable. So still flying by hand. And now let's push the heading button, that gives us a heading sync mode. And that will sync the heading knob that goes fully automatic now. Let's turn off the passenger safety and uh, landing lights because we are above 10,000 feet by now. I will wait with the passenger signs until this right turn is over. So that's definitely quite some interesting departure order here. So let us quickly check the after takeoff checklist. Landing gear is up, flaps are up now, throttles are in climb mode. You can also see this purple climb indication on the ICAS. Ice projection is as required, we don't need it. Pressurization is fine. Altimeters we have to set at 18,000 feet. Exteriors, exterior lights are set and APU is off. So now we are at 217 knots for the climb. The speeds all get handled by the uh, FMS calculations. 
and at some point it will switch over to Mark 0.76. So these are the default climb speeds. Now we have to even level off at 19,000 feet, that might also be a bit uh, uncomfortable. Still flying by hand here. And now the aircraft wants to accelerate to 320 knots as soon as it levels off, so I'm going to manual speed selection and dial it down to 280 here, so we don't get too fast now. And trying to stay around 19,000. Now at some point I would like to engage the autopilot. Exit jet 325, radar contact, continue climb, flight level 410. Continue climb, flight level 410, exit jet 325. So we are now cleared to climb to our cruise flight level 410. But first of all, I would, I would like to uh, engage the autopilot, as I said. So there we have the button in the center of the uh, MCP. Let's push it. So let's dial in the altitude, 41,000, and before engaging flight level change, let's dial down the speed to 270 again, and engage a shallow vertical speed climb first, to make it a bit more comfortable for the uh, virtual passengers right here. Alright, now let's go back to flight level change. Now let's also disengage the seatbelt signs. So all the autopilot modes and uh, flight director modes are now, are now correctly set. We are in heading sync mode. As you can see, this, the heading bug is moving in sync with the aircraft all the time. As you might have seen by now with the left rotary knob below this touchscreen Garmin display down there, we can change the range of the maps. Alright, now is also a good time to change to uh, standard barrow, so we are pushing the barrow knob, that gives us standard barrow. And the value that was set before is now in the pre-selection window. So you can also adjust that value for the arrival airport then. So that was quite an interesting departure out of Medford, Kilo Mike Foxford Romeo, turning right for an eternity here. The departure was quite okay. Once again, I don't like the business jets too much with their climb performance, that is way too excessive in my opinion. But whatever, now we are on our way to San Francisco and I will catch you back when we are ready to descend, I think. Alright, we are not descending yet, we are still climbing as you can see, but there are some more things we can do along the way. Once again, from the flight plan page, you can uh, access the VNAV pages. And here you can once again see our climb schedule, 270 knots or mark 0.76. Right here on the map display, you can see this light bluish marker that marks our point where we reach our altitude. And one more thing we can do now is entering our arrival procedure. Right here you can see the arrival that has been imported by Simreef the Bodega 3 arrival via the ML back transition. Right here we can even show it on the map and you get this uh, arrival drawn and that looks correctly. And now let's also fill in the approach, IS28 right. You can also select the transition here but indeed we need vectors this time. And we can enter the minimums. Let's have a look at the chart for the approach. Zooming in a bit. Zoom, zoom, there we are. So 111.7 is the ILS frequency and 284 is the course. Final intercept will be at 1800 feet. And the minimums for ILS are 213. So that's what we are setting up here. Barometric, enter. Right here we have the frequency and the identifier, that's correct. We can even 
preview this uh, ILS approach on the, on the map. We don't want to say load and activate now, because then we would get a direct to the uh, ILS waypoint. That's not what we want, we just want to load it. Otherwise it would uh, delete the complete flight plan. <laughs> And we nearly reached uh, our top of climb point. Also the half bank mode did engage automatically. So this uh, aircraft is really also very automated, very modern and automated. Many of the things happen without any further pilot's input. So now I will see you when we are descending. Alright, not much more way to go before we can start our descent into Frisco. Right here on the VNF profile page you can see the uh, cruise altitude where we are at, at the moment and also the distance to the top of descent. So one and a half minutes to go. And here we have our arrival that I'm quickly going to show you in full screen mode. So we are coming from, now it reset the zoom, whatever. Well, let's have a look in a second. Now let's request our descent first, because we are very, very close to our top of descent point. And you also get this VNAV marker on the PFD. So we can descend to 17,000 first, and uh, now you can see the automatic VNAV path intercept for the descent. That is very smooth in this aircraft type, and very nicely done. Now the VNF park marker is coming down and now we are in VNF path descent. Smoothly pitching down, very nice. Also I did already prepare the uh, barrels, which we got by ATC. So right here once again you can see our arrival procedure. We are coming from ML back above flight level 290. Then comes Johnny with a, with a speed and an altitude constraint. And that goes further down the road, until we are then pretty much at uh, Frisco Airport. So unfortunately there is no approach transition from this point when coming from the north, so we have to use vectors and heading flying. Further let's now go to the landing data calculations. As we are in the descent already, here we have our arrival runway, which is correct to add right. We have to load our metadata once again, just like for the uh, departure. Surface is dry. Here we have the runway data, that is all fine. The landing config will be with uh, landing flaps full. For some reason you cannot say that you have reversers, whatever. And we are accepting our landing speeds. V approach will be 123 and V ref 112. Also, you can get a lot of waypoint information for any waypoint that you choose, right here for our arrival airport. We have general information, we have all the frequencies, we can even now click the ATIS frequency and make it, in, make it active in COM2 with one click. That's quite awesome. And as soon as we are in range, we will hear the, ATC, uh, the uh, ATIS. We can look at the meta information right here, the weather. We have the charts right here, runway information, quite awesome. So this waypoint info can be used for any airport and any waypoint. Alright, we are still well on the VNAV descent at mark point 8 and also the minimums you can see right there, 213 feet. There we have our landing speeds, mark point 8 as I said. At some point it will change to our key, uh, speed constraint that is coming up, 280 knots at Johnny. And the VNAV in this aircraft is really very capable. So, When you have a complete VNAV flight plan to the destination airport, complete with uh, an approach and a star and everything, then it will fly you automatically down to the runway, no problem. As I said, for this flight we have to fly headings and vectors, so it will not work this way, unfortunately. And we are closer to the airport now and we got uh, vectors by ATC, so now we have to turn left 110. So we dial in the heading out of the uh, auto 
sync mode. Now we have to set it up manually and we are hitting the heading button. Dual Calv approach, exit jet 325 at 13500, descending 11000. Exit jet 325, radar contact. So as I mentioned before, when you have a complete VNF capable flight plan, including the star and, and the approach transition and everything, then you can leave it in the auto modes for the complete flight. It will fly you down automatically, no issues. Once again, this right here is a bit different. So now let us activate the approach. That will get rid of the remaining flight plan. Enter the localizer mode as our nav source. And now we only have the ILS approach visible on the map. As you can see, we are now left of the airport and just flying over San Francisco downtown, I think. We will have a look outside the window in a second and also some traffic ahead. So there are some other aircraft approaching Frisco right here. So for now we are descending with vertical speed and heading mode and that should work out quite well. Now you can see the aircraft also decelerated to 250 knots. And now let's have a look outside. There you can see Frisco. In the background you can see the Golden Gate Bridge. Quite awesome, my friends. This is all default scenery right here. I'm using the Asobo handcrafted KSFO airport that comes with the premium deluxe version as well. Just like this aircraft. The C700 Citation Longitude. Right there you can once again see our nav source changed to log 1, so localizer 1. Now let's engage the, the seatbelt signs and landing lights because we are below 10,000. And we will continue our approach. Right heading exit jet three okay, now we got headings towards Sipin waypoint, so we are going to hit the waypoint, say direct 2 and activate, and now let's go back to nav mode. And that's how you go direct to a waypoint of the flight plan. Also the terminal area speed uh, doesn't really work, so below 4000 feet or within 12 nautical miles of the arrival airport the aircraft should have slowed down to 180 knots, but somehow that also didn't work. Once again I'm pretty sure the, the reason is our manual flying here with headings and vertical speed and so on. If you have the uh, complete VNAV capable flight plan and LNAV capable then that all will work automatically. Now I'm using manual speed control to slow down and we can extend flaps 1. And now let us arm the approach mode. So localizer and glide slope are now armed. And I'm going to engage the pack safety button because we are shortly landing. So now we caught the localizer course and also the glide slope. Now let's go flaps 2. I'm back into FMS speed again and gear down. Now let's engage the taxi and wing lights again. The FMS speed now points towards 140 knots, but the final approach speed you have to enter manually via manual speed mode. Like this, and now I'm going to enter 122. Okay, let's have a look over the approach uh, checklist. Landing data is confirmed, V speeds are set, and everything is fine. As projection, we don't need. Flight instrumentation is also good. Minimums are set, altimeters are set, crew briefing is fine, flaps are set. And the before landing. Gear is down, flaps are full, lights are set, ice protection is, as I said, fine. Speed brakes are retracted, ice and cast messages are non-existent. So all is good. So we only need to disengage the autopilot and fly the approach manually now. Autopilot off. 
We have plenty of runways, so I'm going to only deploy uh, idle thrust reversers. And then we are going to use quite a lot of the runway and exit it to the right, further back for the uh, FBO ramp. So enjoy the landing, my friends. And we are down. The landing wasn't that bad, if I may say so myself. <laughs> As you can see now, the thrust reversers are deployed. But we are just at idle thrust right here. Also, the speed brakes are extended. And down here you can also see the thrust reverser message on the ICAS display. Alright, reversers are now off and we are doing some manual braking and exit to the right towards the ramp where the NetJets uh, aircraft are usually parking. San Francisco ground, exit jet 325, runway vacated with Delta. So we can now raise the flaps, disengage the auto throttle. Taxi to parking one via Delta Charlie, exit jet 325. As we can see, also the speed brakes are now in. Let's go to L2 reporting for the transponder, turn off the landing lights and wing lights. All right, what comes next? APU can now start. So let's go over the after landing checklist. Thrust reversers are in, flaps are set, ice protection we didn't need, and lights are set. Here we have our landing point on the map, that was quite nice. So now we let this uh, United aircraft pass and we are going to taxi further. So all in all the flight was okay. Once again there were some, some hiccups during the approach that the aircraft didn't automatically slow down with the FMS speed. But once again there's always something as you know. And here we are. We are going to park to the left at this uh, VIP entrance lounge right there. I guess that belongs to NetJets if I'm not mistaken. But don't quote me on that. And we are going to stop right here. Alright, taxi lighting off, seatbelt signs off, emergency exit lights off, and the standby power as well. The APU gen is on, so we can now shut off the engines by pushing these run stop buttons that are covered. So we have to open the guard and push the buttons. Also, I'm going to delete the flight plan under the flight plan options. Doing it that way. Okay. And here we are. So let's uh, cover the shutdown checklist completely. Throttle is idle. Parking brake is set. Now all the lights are off as well. Engines are off by now. Emergency lights off. Uh, standby power off. APU off. Lights are off. And only the battery buttons are, are missing. Transponder also to standby. Switching off the weather radar that I had uh, on during the flight for some time. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, we have some more lights to turn off. Verifying that the APU is off now and we can shut off the aircraft completely with the battery buttons. 
So that was it for today's flight with the Cessna C700 Citation Longitude or Citation. If you stayed until now then thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the flight and the tutorial video and uh, yeah. Hope to see you next time for the next flight that we are doing. We'll see what comes uh, at that point. So once again thanks for being here. Have a great day. Stay safe and see you then. Bye bye.